just normally start from up here, but today we're having a consecration of a new organ stop. I'll get to that directly. First of all, welcome to the family and friends of little Sebastian who is here to be baptised. Today we also especially welcome Pastor Simon Cooper, Sebastian's grandfather, who will be baptising Sebastian later in this service. It's normal for us as a congregation when objects are used in our worship to consecrate them to the glory of God. So that's what's happening now with this new stop for our organ. Friends in Christ, the Apostle Paul says, Christ's message in all its richness must live in your hearts. Teach and instruct one another with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Almighty God, as the angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven ceaselessly adore you and praise your holy name, unite our voices with theirs, so that through this instrument we may glorify you with music and song in our worship, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Zimbelstern is that bell sound that you heard at the end of the last piece. I consecrate this Zimbelstern in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God use it to proclaim his grace and strengthen the faith of his people. Amen. God bless you all. Let's stand for our first hymn.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Please be seated. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my sins to the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor helpless sinner, confess to you all my sins and repent of all the evil I have done. I have deeply displeased you and deserve your punishment in time and in eternity. But I am sorry for my sins and I ask you for the sake of the holy innocent sufferings and death of your dear Son Jesus Christ to be gracious and merciful to me. Amen. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart to confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? And do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life even as Christ has made you holy? Christ gave to his church the authority to forgive the sins of those who repent and to declare to those who do not repent that their sins are not forgiven. Therefore, upon your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Amen. We're about to have a baptism today and I ask the children to come forward and to be where I am at the front of the church here. So kids, come on down. You'll want a good view today. I'll wait for you. We'll pray after the baptism, but I'll talk to you briefly beforehand. Come on down. Good on you, Benedict. Come take a seat. Love it to see you. Good on you for coming on down. We see God bless you. Good on you, Matthew. Good to see Natalie and Stephanie. God bless you. Reuben, God bless you too, man. So today we're going to have a baptism here. And you see, there's a font there which is filled with water. And very soon, little Sebastian, who's wearing a white robe, which symbolizes the goodness, the purity of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will be washed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit with water. He will become our new brother in Christ. So keep your eyes open and keep your ears open. I'll come back to you after the baptism and I'll pray with you. I invite the baptism party, please, to come forward. Sam and Sansia, God bless you as parents to little Sebastian. God give you wisdom as you hand on the faith to him and as you live growing in love with him. And Amelia and Jaden, God bless you in your role as godparents. Thank you for being here to witness this baptism and for promising to set a good example to this little fellow and to pray for him in his life. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore... Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. The word of God teaches that when people are baptized, 
our Heavenly Father adopts them as His children, and they become one with Jesus Christ. Of course, we understand as God's people that all human beings are made in the image of God. But through holy baptism, little Sebastian will be able to call out to God as Father, just as our Lord Jesus Christ does. Now, parents and sponsors of Sebastian, since you've brought him to be baptized, you are responsible for his upbringing in the church. Remember him in your prayers. Bring him to the services in God's house. And teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Remind him of his baptism and set him a good example, providing for his instruction in the faith. Do you intend to do this? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. The Lord made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. So I say, Sebastian, in his name, hear and speak the word of God. And Sebastian received the mark of the Holy Cross as a sign that Christ the crucified has redeemed you. Let's thank our Heavenly Father for the waters of baptism. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you led your people through the Red Sea out of slavery into the promised land and that in the waters of the Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Send down your Holy Spirit on Sebastian so that his sins may be washed away in the waters of baptism. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Sebastian received the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ who says, Let the little children come to me and don't stop them, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he gave them his own prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Let's, as a congregation, hand on this prayer to Sebastian as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord watch over you as you go out and as you come in, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's head down to the font. Please do watch your step. So dear Samuel and Sancia and uh, godparents of Sebastian and brothers and sisters in Christ gathered here today, let us answer on behalf of Sebastian as he renounces the devil and declares allegiance to the triune God. Sebastian, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From, From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you could just place his head close to them. Sebastian William Moses Cooper, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth by water and the Spirit, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthen you with his Spirit, so that you receive eternal life. Amen. Amen.
So let us now pray for our new brother in Christ. Merciful Father, we thank you that you extend your church throughout the world as you have now written Sebastian's name in the book of life and have made have united him with Jesus your son. Guide him so that with all your saints he may reach his heavenly home through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Members of Bethlehem receive Sebastian whom God has given to us as a brother in Christ. Pray for him, set a good example to him. Let's receive him today with applause. <laughs> and the peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks. You saw that kid's little Sebastian was washed with water in God's name. He's adopted as God's child together with us. So let's pray. Thanks, Heavenly Father, that we have a new brother in our family. Since you're kind and generous and loving to us, help us to grow as your kind, generous and loving people. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good on your kids. You can go back to your seats. Oops. If you're a guest here today, you'll notice that as a congregation at Bethlehem, we stand and sit down for different parts of our service. If you just follow the lead of the congregation, everything will be fine. The congregation will now be led by the choir for the psalm.
Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, and glory be to His priest. We bless you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, since you have given us grace by the confession of the true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and to worship the unity by the power of your divine majesty, keep us firm in this faith and defend us forever from all evil. For you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. the word of the Lord as it is written in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 beginning at verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty and the hem of his robe filled the temple seraphs were in attendance above him each had six wings with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal, that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it 
and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. So then, brothers and sisters, oh, sorry, hear the word of the Lord as it is written in the book of Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn.
please stand. <clears throat> Today I'm proclaiming the word of God from the Gospel, John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, through your word, fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that in trusting in Christ, we may grow in love for each other. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. You see, today we have things set up differently in the chancel here. We've had a Bach at Bethlehem weekend. So on Friday night, we had some Bach cantatas performed here. Yesterday afternoon, performances of Bach's music. And tonight, at our Vespers service, we will be having a cantata that Bach wrote for Trinity Sunday. This will have implications for us when it comes to distributing communion today. I'll tell you about that later on. Now Bach was a great composer, musician and Lutheran theologian. At the end of his church music, he always wrote three letters. S-D-G. Soli Deo Gloria. Glory to God alone. In writing these letters and in writing his music, Bach was confessing that there is one God to whom all glory, might, majesty and power belong. But Bach also confessed, along with all of us, although that there is one God alone, that this God is a community of love. That God is not alone. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, through our baptism in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit's name, we are drawn into this community of love. And we are freed to share in God's love in our own lives with all people in God's creation. Now, today's Gospel reading includes what is probably the most famous verse in the whole of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Now verses like this one reveal to us that when we are dealing with God, we are dealing with a community. God, as the text says, so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now in the life of the church, there is a traditional and simple way of describing what God is like. I'm about to hand it on to you again today. This is not an explanation of God, but it is a description of what God is like, about the reality of God as a community of love. Here's how the description goes. It's very simple. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. There is one God. This is not a riddle be worked out. This is a description of what God is like. We can spend a lifetime meditating on this description, but today I want to bring out two aspects of this teaching. And the first is that in the Trinity there is an equality of community. So for example, the Son is not less God than the Father is. It's not as if the church is saying Jesus is almost God, but if you want to see the real thing, you have to look at the Father. No, the church says, based on Scripture, that if we have seen the Son, we have seen the Father. Secondly, this teaching also describes that there is not interchangeability in the Trinity. So it's not as if the Father is just the Son in another form, like water can be ice or steam. No, 
There is a real difference in the persons of the Trinity in this community of love. Now this can sound rather abstract, but we do need to hear this teaching and to meditate on it, to think about it. Because we as human beings naturally conclude that if there is a difference between persons, that there must be unpleasant power relationships. That there must be one dominating another. But as we get to know Jesus, and as he reconciles us to the Father, and as he gives us the Holy Spirit, the one who gives us comfort, who helps us in our need, who speaks up for us, we are welcomed into a new way of life, where we see that difference can be brought together in a beautiful harmony, into a beautiful unity where love shines in darkness. So, for example, in John 13, we read that Jesus, on his last night with his disciples, when he shared his last meal with them, took off his outer garment and, as a servant, stooped down and washed their feet. The text says, after Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. First of all, there is difference here. You could even say hierarchy. Jesus says that his disciples are right to call him teacher and Lord. That is really who he is and who they are not. And yet he goes on. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. As Christians, we see true difference in the genuine authority exercised by our Lord Jesus Christ in his service to us, in his ministry of serving his disciples, and especially in his sacrificial death that draws us to the Father, into life with God, just as we hear in today's reading, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life so that whoever believes in him that is no matter what differences there are in the human community where opportunities for domination are so clearly evident no matter what the ethnicity the gender the socio-economic status whoever believes in the son may have eternal life as a gift from the Father. Now this life with God has real practical implications for our life together because as we are drawn into the community of love, as we are drawn into God, we are freed in our differences to live the life of love here and now. So in 1 John, we read these words, Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this God is love. Now, echoing St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, we could say, God is patient. God is kind. God is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. God does not insist on his own way. God rejoices in the truth, not in wrongdoing. St. John wants to give us the chief example of God's love at work 
in what we hear from today's gospel. This is echoed also throughout the scriptures. God's love, he says in 1 John, was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We are naturally so fearful of God and like our first parents, we naturally don't trust in God or expect to receive good things from God. We naturally try to cover our own shame and to hide from God. But God who is love, God who has created us, provides for us in our need, even in our need for atonement. Even when this means offering his son as a sacrifice for our sins, as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so St. John writes, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. As we are kind to one another, as we are generous with one another, as we are not boastful or rude with one another, as together we don't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth, as these things are worked in us and among us by God, we see God's love reaching its goal here even in this community, even in the small acts of life, seeing that our differences do not need to lead to domination, but to the harmony of God sounding out in our world. J.S. Bach had not seen God, and yet his music, written to the glory of God alone, was suffused with freude, with joy, and with delight that comes from the good news of God. We also have not seen God, but we, who share in the life of God, in the life of this community of love, are free to love one another, seeing in our differences the chance for God to show his beautiful harmony. So, brothers and sisters, baptised into the triune name, may we look at each other as God looks at us with great generosity, with the freedom that comes from love. Let us be kind to one another, knowing that in doing so, God's love reaches its goal among us. Well, may God's name be glorified in our own lives as individuals, in our lives as a congregation, and in our world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please do stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds safe in Christ Jesus. Amen. The choir will now lead us in the anthem. Please be seated.
please stand. As God's people gathered together in Christ Jesus, let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ and for all people according to their need. Please be seated. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing your love to us through Jesus Christ, your Son. Please always give us your Holy Spirit so that we may live in your community of love and so that we may love each other sincerely, being kind and patient with one another, not being boastful or arrogant or envious or rude, but rejoicing in the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please continue to show yourself to the world by spreading the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let all pastors and teachers of the church Faithfully hand on your saving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please bless, protect and strengthen the indigenous people of Australia. Give all in positions of authority the grace to govern wisely and justly so that those who are vulnerable may be kept from harm and so that we may live in harmony with each other and the land. Please let all the people of our nation live in the reconciliation that comes through the blood of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring all people to accept the world as your beautiful gift and move us to preserve its beauty and diversity. Guide scientists as they investigate your creation and bless all rightly ordered agricultural commerce and industry lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray that all people may value human life as made in your image correct the abuse and misuse of human life in the world and bring your gift of peace through your healing word lord in your mercy hear our prayer thank you for our families and friends and for all relationships that express your love. Bless those on whom we depend for daily companionship and love, and all those with whom we live and work, learn and play. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for Mari Adam, Brian Miller, Christine Leonard, and for all people in need. We pray for the friendless and lonely, for the despairing and those who mourn, for all in pain and for the sick and dying. Bring them to seek their hope and strength in our Lord Jesus Christ and meet their daily needs. Help us set aside selfishness so that we may bear one another's troubles and griefs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you are the ground of our existence and the foundation of our faith. Support us in this living faith so that we may always glorify you who live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sorry, Gina, just one request. Um, I can't see any alcoholic hand wash up the front here. Uh, Peter, would you be kind enough to pass that alcoholic wash up to me? Just behind you. Good on you. God bless you. Thank you, Peter.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. For that is fitting and right. It is truly fitting and right and for our lasting good that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, one Lord. And in the confession of the only true God, we worship you, the incomprehensible Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
Please do come up, Tom. Farman. Please do come up, Monica. Because we have these instruments um, in our church today, we're going to have to distribute communion differently from how we normally would. Today we'll go down to the front of the church to the steps, and you see we've put cushions down here. We're distributing the body and blood of Christ from the outside to the in. It's okay to remain standing. It may be harder to kneel down and stand up. If you'd like to kneel down, you're most welcome. If you're a guest here, you can come forward for a blessing, simply cross your arms. It's okay also to stay in your seat if you're not normally a communing Christian. The ushers are here to give any directions in case we have any troubles they experienced and will and no doubt be able to work out what to do if there are any issues. This is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins to come because everything is ready.
Please stand. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood make his strong in body and in soul to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing gift, and we pray that through it you would graciously strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing the doxology. to see you at Bethlehem for worship this morning and to both of you who are joining us online as well and again a special welcome to the family and friends of little Sebastian God bless you all it's good to have pastor Simon serving us here today pastor Joshua has been at Enfield this morning for the baptism of his nephew Banjo so that's why he's not here at the nine o'clock service just some brief announcements today from our bulletin you'll see we have a special meeting coming up to deal with constitutional matters we didn't have a quorum for constitutional matters at our AGM 
So you'll see there's a date coming up. It should be relatively straightforward, and let's hope so. There's morning tea today over in Bethlehem House, so please, if you're able, do join us over there for morning tea. This evening we have our Vespers service, but again, a special Vespers service this evening because it will include a performance of the Trinity Cantata by Bach, number 165. If you know about these things, the choir will be back for this. The Adelaide Cantata Band will be performing for us. Please do come back for this service if you're at all able to, or if you'd like to hear God's Word proclaimed in the music of Bach. Sunday week in the evening, we have our next Sunday night in the city service, aimed especially at younger people, where we give teaching from the Scriptures, of course, and the, the Catechism of the Church. I don't believe there's any other announcement that needs to be made today. Oh, one more, please, Timothy. Oh, please, thank you so much for this. Directly before the Vesper service at 7 p.m., Pastor Tom Peach, who teaches church history at the seminary, will be giving a talk on cantatas, Bach's cantatas, and their place in the liturgy. Bach was this great Lutheran composer. Maybe you don't know much about these cantatas. Why not come along early, listen to a 20-minute talk, beautifully presented, we've seen the slides already, by Pastor Tom. You'll learn about these um, gifts to the church. And then stay around for Vespers if you'd like to. Thank you very much, Timothy. I had meant to say that. God's blessings be with you in the week ahead.